Hey everyone, it's Tawani here. I hope all of you are doing great. Welcome back to my channel once again. So today's video is all about long term ownership review of Polo 1.2 TDI Highline model. So I am using this car since almost last uh, 10 to 12 years and uh, manufacturing year is uh, 2012 and currently the auto kilometer is uh, 1.23 lakh kilometer. So I thought this is the right time to make one long term ownership review. So without wasting time, let's get it started. So if I talk about the engine specification, then it is powered by 1.2 3 cylinder uh, TDI uh, engine and uh, power output is uh, around uh, uh, 70 bhp and uh, torque is rated at around uh, 180 newton meter in international market they are selling another variant also which is having a dpf and uh, that comes with a uh, blue motion technology so generally blue motion technology means uh, it is having the longer four and fifth gear so you can get a better cruising speed along with the top end performance and uh, mileage also but in Indian version also, I am not sure if it's a blue motion or not. But in Indian version also, the gear ratios are sufficiently tall. And you can hold a cruise in triple digit speeds without uh, having much trouble. So, main highlight point about this car is it's a diesel engine. It's a very small diesel engine, just a 1200 uh, cc. And uh, one cylinder is lacking. So, it's a basically a three cylinder engine. So, advantage of this uh, diesel engine it's a mileage champion you can easily extract anything in between 20 to 30 kmpl so if you are a seated driver then uh, easily you can achieve 26 28 kmpl on your highway rides and uh, if i talk about performance so although it lacks a one cylinder but still performance is on par with the other four cylinder diesel engines if i talk about top speed then today also it can easily do 190 kmph on speedo and uh, cruising speed if I can say then uh, it's in between 100 to 160 kmph and thanks to its uh, very good insulation you won't feel any kind of uh, external noise within the cabin NVH is excellent so has the uh, straight line stability so these two things are very good in this car uh, high speed stability top end performance as well as mileage and uh, NVH. If I talk about transmission, then it is powered by 5 speed uh, transmission. It's a very frugal one. I am using it since last uh, failure, but I am yet to encounter any kind of issue with the transmission. It slots in every gear very precisely. Uh, shift is very short also, means uh, travel come uh, uh, in between gears. And it, uh, if I talk about the gear ratio, then gear ratio is uh, sufficiently taller. So first, second, third is uh, shorter, eh? but uh, three, four, and five gears are uh, very much uh, on the taller side. So easily you can cruise on a triple digit speed without compromising much on the uh, mileage. So that is very good thing about this car. You can all day cruise on 120, 130 kmph, and still it will return you a good mileage. So that is a one positive point about this car. Then the another thing uh, that is good about it, that's a uh, ride and handling. So I have upgraded its suspension with the FAG one. So FAGs are slightly on the firmer side. So my handling is slightly improved, but ride quality has taken a toss. So sometimes it's not comfortable on a broken turmeric. But yes, on highway speeds, it's a very good because the issue with the OEM suspension, they are the oil, oil field suspension. And uh, if you hit a single portal also, right, a good size portal, then it will start leaking. So I uh, observed that in my vehicle also. So this time I shifted to the gas charge FAG1. And as of now, I am happy with it. Slightly it offers a body roll because I haven't changed springs. Springs are the factory one only. So we'll check if uh, aftermarket springs are available or not. So which can counter some sort of body roll of this car. One uh, handling point of view, this is a decent handler. I won't say it's a great, but it's a decent handler. Uh, it is powered by the EPS, electronic power steering, and uh, that is uh, accurate, right? Not aggressive one, but accurate one. Steering feel is good. On a triple digit speed also, you won't get any fatigue or you won't be disappointed with the performance. So EPS tuning is one spot. 
but uh, if i can say uh, is it a best handlers car so no i would read uh, grande punto on the first position followed by the ford figo and uh, this is the third car which is having a decent handling so yes it's a good it's a, you can say for a family a point of view it's a very good package you can definitely go for this now if i talk about maintenance then uh, it's better i don't talk anything about it so my experience is uh, very bad and luckily i found one fng garage nearby my place and uh, that guy was earlier associated with the Volkswagen uh, workshop only so i am getting a Volkswagen uh, level of quality at a much reasonable price but yes Volkswagen workshop experience is not that good if i talk about uh, in cabin comfort then i am a 6 feet 1 inch tall and you can see me how i am uh, comfortably sitting in the car yes some uh, issue might be on the roof line on the for the front passenger it's pretty good for the back passengers so four person can comfort comfortably travel in this car it is having a 280 liters of boot space so it can easily accommodate your two or three airport luggage so as in terms of practicality it's a very decent one you won't be regretting if you are getting a pre-own or a, any other good deal then now if i talk about negative side of this vehicle then uh, spare part price is on slightly premium side because uh, Volkswagen and Skoda, even premium cars have some uh, uh, common parts. So pricing is slightly on a premium side. And uh, parts failure is unpredictable. Anytime anything can fail. So I can say it's an over-engineered car. And uh, definitely Volkswagen should uh, simplify the things. Because uh, some parts, say for example, ABS sensor, right? Wheel ABS sensor. So if you hit a pothole and uh, your ABS sensor may go kaput. So once one sensor is failed, then it will be a series of sequence. So your second sensor will also fail and it's a slightly costlier part. And uh, still, even after uh, replacing it with the new, you can't ascertain if it will perform or not. So that's the issue with this brand or engineering, I would say. Maintenance is also slightly on higher side because it consumes 4500 uh, ml of engine oil and the Volkswagen using a full synthetic engine oil so your engine oil bill will be only close to 5000 rupees and then uh, you add on other parts so your routine service will easily cost you around 8 to 10000 rupees but the good thing is service interval it is having a 15000 kilometer interval so if you are not using car that much then once a year 8 to 10,000 rupee is not a big deal and uh, in that you can enjoy a German build quality along with the decent ride and handling package. If I talk about safety features then it is having a EPS then uh, two airbags on the front side then ABS, EBD so these are the basic safety features and uh, Recently, Volkswagen recalled a uh, few batch of cars as they were having uh, some uh, airbag failure issues. So, Volkswagen did it for my car also without charging me any, any rupee. So, that's a good thing about Volkswagen. They recall even 12 year old car. And uh, it's a very rare event. You won't find this kind of things uh, happening in other brands. So, for that, 100% positive from my side. If I talk about brakes, then uh, basically I am using a Fiat Punto, which is known for his ride, handling and brakes. So sometimes I do not find uh, Polo brakes satisfactory, but yes, it is one of the best in the segment, I can say. So from my side, no complaint for the braking. If I talk about build quality, then build quality is exceedingly well. Even after 12 years, you won't hear any kind of rattling within the car. And at the same time, I'm yet to find a single rusting point in car. Be it a hidden or be it a open source metal, but you won't find any spot that is rusted. So that uh, speaks about the brand and commitment towards uh, delivering a quality product. So that is all about uh, a short long-term ownership review about the Polo 1.2 TDI. I am very much satisfied with this car, no issues with the engine, no issues with the transmission, delivers excellent mileage, 
ride and handling is acceptable and uh, if you find a good fng uh, service garage near your area then it may be cheaper to maintain also so overall it's a decent car if you are getting one in a pre owned market then uh, definitely you can go for it because it's a far better vehicle than whatever manufacturers are offering in a recent time at a very premium rates like uh, 10 lakh 15 lakh 20 lakh if you like the video then uh, feel free to share among your groups among your friends and uh, subscribe for such uh, more automotive content i will try to bring more automotive content for you